Hello and welcome again to Political News, Political Views. My name is David Lillis. I'm here to spend an hour with you. And uh, as always, no teleprompters, no cue cards, no idiot boards. Maybe an idiot, but no boards. Uh, this is the show that we bring up topics to help you to think. Not what to think, but to think. You out there have a very vast knowledge of what's going on. Unfortunately, some of the things that I'm seeing, and maybe you are too, is that people aren't using their knowledge. The things that are being said, being done, are just so outrageous. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, this is something that you see on a comedy show on TV. But the stuff that's happening out there in our world, and mostly we talk about um, federal politics here, and uh, I will try my best not to drop any four-letter words. Uh, I can't give you a guarantee, but I'm going to do my absolute best. Um, but where I'd like to start today is uh, a little background. And I've, I've talked about this before when, when I went to school. Um, and how we were taught how to think. That we could look at the situation, we could hear the facts, we could understand to look for facts and find out if something is true. We didn't just take things verbatim. We used our heads, we thought about it. During that time, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, America seemed to push for education. But what I see now is People can be told something and they take it verbatim. They take it as truth. In our world right now, when I come to you like this, I'm scared because I see the world that I came up with. America was that, uh, that beacon the place that everybody wanted to go. The land of opportunity. The streets weren't paved with gold, even though they said they were. They weren't. But you had the opportunity to be anything that you wanted. But I'll tell you what I see now. I see government officials banning books, telling you what you can and cannot say, telling teachers, if you try to teach something, we'll fine you or we'll put put you in jail. There was a little um, saying that when I started running for office, I, and I heard this in Detroit, and at first I thought it was the Democrats that came up with this, but I guess it's across the board, whatever party you're in, whatever affiliation you're in. But it was, keep them stupid, keep them in control. You're not stupid. And you don't need to be in control. You need to think. You need to look at the situation, assess it for what it is, and come up with a clear thought. Because one thing that I used to say when I was running, whatever these assholes do, you have to live with it and you have to pay for it. And so do your kids. The world is changing. I understand that. There's areas that we're excelling on. But now we're starting to go backwards because what we're doing is one person can stand there and lie. Actually, I, I, I say one. I don't know why I'm saying one. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous how many are, are doing that. They sit there and they lie to our face and we catch them. It's amazing that they did a montage this week after the alleged raid. It was not a raid. Donald Trump needs to understand something. A tr uh, tariff is not a tax. A raid is where they kick in the door and they did not. Trump said it was a raid. People believed it. All up in arms. And here we sit. Now here's what scares me and this is why I bring this up. After that crap that he went through First of all, he was the only one that announced it, and he lied. 
He said it was a raid. It was not a raid. They called the Secret Service two hours before, said, we're coming. We have the proper paperwork. And the Secret Service said, okay, very good. Come on in. There was no raid. They didn't kick in his, uh, or blow up his safe, as he said. They didn't attack the people that were there. They didn't run amok. He made it all up. They came on and they said, this is what the, the DOJ did. But people wouldn't accept it. But the scariest part was, then they started, oh, we have to start mobilizing. And this is where it's not funny anymore. I've come on here and I've, I've told jokes and I've given uh, opinions, but we're starting to get to a point that we're heading for some real trouble. This is going to affect your lives. This is going to affect your schools. It's going to affect your homes, possibly. We have people out there who don't care. Now, what happened on January 6th, okay, we keep bringing it up, bringing it up. That wasn't a joke. That's not somebody protesting something they don't like. That was violence. And I've talked to people who said, I, I don't see any violence there. Well, you're a damn fool. It's right there in front of you. And the January 6th brought out even more that we didn't know about. And they showed how it was working. They tried to make it, us feel as though, oh, well, it, it's not what you think. It's not what you, you didn't see that. Andrew Clyde of Georgia even got on there. They caught him on camera moving a dresser in front of the door or a desk. And he was crying. And then he comes out six weeks later and says, well, it was just some tourists that were walking through and they were taking pictures. They were standing between the stanchions. He must have been at the movie theater because he sure as hell wasn't at the Capitol. But as we said, he was there. He was crying. He was scared. But he lied. Trump lied. The senators, the congressmen lied. Fox News, Newsmax more than lied. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a joke. This is not a damn reality show. This is our country going to hell. There's a saying that I used to know, about well, uh, several sayings, but I'm going to hit you with this one first. Sometimes you don't know what you got till it's gone. And I see people, you know, going up about their business, and that's fine. I understand that. But you need to be aware of what's going on around you because it's going to affect you. And right now, there is a mobilization of violence that could erupt. Now, to say, well, this is America, that doesn't happen. Well, Germany said the same thing, as did Italy, as did China, as did Russia, as did North Korea. But it did happen. And people brushed it aside, said, well, you know, that's just Hitler being Hitler. Oh, you know, they're just doing... No. Once it starts, it's going to be very difficult to stop. And the sad part is, we see in these primaries, there are people running. And having been a candidate myself, I told the truth. Look what it got me. But it was the right thing to do. The candidates that are out there now, and we have two here in Michigan, actually three, that are running on the Republican side. And they are lying, number one. Number two, they admit that they will break the law because somebody told them to. They will lie to your face. They will take your money. They will cause so much havoc. And you know what's amazing about it? If they're doing that before they run, what will they do if they get in? Good example, Trump. Now. 
For anyone here that thinks that I'm a fan of Trump, and I am not, and if you are, well, go ahead and take your shoes off because you want to throw it at the TV. Trump is a criminal. He's a narcissistic, egotistical, uh, perverted punk. And he's lying to you. Now, after that raid, he sent out emails for people to give him money. I had also heard that <laughs> after his wife died, and I just heard this as a, from a reliable, very reliable source, that when he put the announcement in for his wife's death, he asked for contributions. Now, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, but I remember in some of the previous shows I said that Trump had collected after the election, actually he started before the election, but after the election he really kicked in with this America First uh, Super PAC. And what was funny with that was that he was collecting money hand over fist. And the thing is, people were contributing to absolutely nothing. I thought he collected 125, 120 million. I was wrong. It was 250, and he's still collecting. And the Republicans who were talking this week, they're collecting. This is a chance for all damn fools. You know, they say a fool and his money is soon parted. Well, the Republican Party proved that. There's a lot of damn fools in it. Now, I'm going to say something about that. So uh, this show, by the way, uh, this week is kind of rambling. My partner is not here, unfortunately. But... Before you, you get the impression that I dislike Republicans, that is not true. I, I like Republicans. Republicans was where I started. And um, what really pains me is the Republican Party, the one that I grew up with and respected, and I can go through the number of Republicans that I, I have a great respect for. Um, Ronald Reagan. I loved Ronald Reagan. Uh, Gerald Ford. You know something? Gerald Ford was a good president because he was real. He didn't put on airs. He didn't, uh, he wasn't phony. He may have been a little misguided, maybe, but, you know, he, he was a good man. He was a good man. George Bush Sr. And I've got to say this, George Bush Jr. I would love to have George Bush Jr. in the White House right now. Um... George Bush Jr. is kind of funny because um, I didn't like what he did, but I did respect the man. What we have now, there is no respect for. None whatsoever. There were other Republicans. John McCain comes to mind. Donald Trump tried to discredit John McCain and no, no. You're not going to discredit John McCain. But he tried. There's other Republicans that have been in there that have been equally as good. And one that I'm going to mention now, several of them. Adam Kinzinger. Liz Cheney. These two know the difference between right and wrong. There were some others. Anthony Gonzalez. Peter Meyer. Fred Upton, uh, Herrera Butler, she just unfortunately lost. These people knew the difference between right and wrong and stood up for it. And you can see the criminal element that's surrounding them. After January 6th, people's homes started to be harassed. Stones thrown at them. They camp outside their homes. And wait a minute, what the hell has happened to us? That's not who we are. But this is what the Republican Party has become. I don't know how many of you knew it, but on January 20th, 2021, Donald Trump, just before he boarded the plane, told the head of the RNC that the RNC can go and F themselves. I didn't use a whole word, just a little bit. He said they didn't protect him. They didn't keep him in office. 
Well, the fact was he lost. Period. He lost. But they didn't keep him in office. He didn't care how they kept him in. He just wanted to stay in so he could continue and he'd be protected from all these lawsuits. But what he did was, she said to him, then you need to give back all the money that you got from them. You also need to give the list of the donors. Well, he didn't want to do that, so he cut a deal with her. This is the con that he is. And, and of course, the RNC isn't going to, it, it is factual, so you can find it, but you're going to have to look for it. But what he did was he said, if they pay his legal bills, he'll stay on the Republican RNC. So they did. But this slick son of a bitch went out right after that and told people to send money to his super PAC. Send it to him, do not send it to the RNC. The RNC to date has spent over $2 million on his lawsuits, including the ones before he was president. So for all you people that are sending money to the RNC, that money is going for his lawsuits. And for those that are sending it to him, understand this. He does not have to account for three quarters of that $250 million. He will have to account for a quarter of it. The rest, you just lined his pockets. The reason he hasn't claimed he's running for office is because any money after that, you have to sign up, you have to get your signatures and get all the paperwork, then you have to do a statement of organization, of which, and I've had to do this myself so I know firsthand, you have to have a bank, you have to have a treasurer, you have to have accountants, you have to have addresses. Anytime you collect so much money, it has to be recorded. Okay? So what Trump did, he had people send it to him, just like he did this week. You used your wife's, your first wife's funeral to collect money? Marjorie Taylor Greene is using hers to collect money for a criminal act. Let's clarify that, that raid. It was not a raid. He took government classified documents, and some of those documents are so classified that they go by number. And he took them out. You're not allowed to do that. We have national security. The question is that they're asking, why did he do it? Well, I got a question. How did Jared Kushner get $2 billion from the Saudis? How did Steve Mnuchin get money? One billion dollars. Billion with a B. Why is it that they are defending Russia in this war and Russia altogether? Why do they have coming to CPAC and going to that country for Orban, who is a dictator, who is a autocrat? Well, quite simple. Trump was going to use that either to sell it, use it for leverage, or, well, screw the country over. Now, some of you are probably going to say, oh, he wouldn't do that. Well, yes, he would. And yes, he did. So for, for you to say that, now, you need to check on this stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling on a lot of things, but my point to this is coming up. The Republican Party, to me, barely exists. It's amazing to me how there are so many politicians who behind the curtains, behind the closed doors, talking outside and have been recorded, think Trump is a horse's ass. But they want that money. They want that position. They don't give a damn about you. They just want the position. And if they have to kiss his ass to keep it, they will. Now, a few shows ago, I praised uh, Mike Pence. And I still will for the one act that he did. 
I always looked at Mike Pence kind of funny because I always wondered how he kept his hair white with his head up Trump's ass. I even told one guy here that uh, Paul Young, who's a, he just won. <laughs> he's a he's a Trumpster. I told him, you know, he didn't want to answer any questions about the Republican Party or about the policy or anything. So I said, next time you see Trump, stick your head up his ass and tell Mike Pence I said hello. That didn't go over too good. He didn't like that for some odd reason. <laughs> I liked it. But getting back to the uh, my point. The Republican Party was a very respectable party. They had purpose, they had cause, they had, had policy. I didn't always agree with what they wanted, but they, they, they had a lot of good points and they did a lot of good legislation. And they were a counter to Democrats who allegedly Democrats are liberal. I'm a Democrat, but I'm in no way liberal. Not in any stretch of the imagination, but the Republican Party, if they don't get their ass in motion, and I'm telling, I'm asking all you Republicans, true Republicans, to step forward. Say so. Stop this horse crap of backing Trump, because I'm going to tell you something. There is a new word that belongs in the dictionary, and it's called Trumpism. Trumpism is a form of fascism. To those idiot Republicans, or let, let, me, let me clarify, to the maggots, to the maggots, and I say maggots because the plural of MAGA is maggots. Fascism is a form of Nazism. It's authoritarian. It's communistic. Trumpism is an offshoot of that, with a slight variance. Fascism has nothing to do with the democratic liberals, nor does socialism. Socialism is a form of Nazism, a form of communism. So understand that. Check it out. They use the words as if they're a weapon. Trumpism, let Trump have his damn party. I, I'll tell you what, it, it, his party won't succeed because he's too busy cleaning it out of money. That's all he's using it for. Trump doesn't really care because if he did, look at his track record. First of all, the majority of the people that he put in, he either uh, pissed them off because he didn't care or they got caught stealing, mostly. On the, on the stealing side. He had more people that had to go because, and, and that happens in all, that happens in all administrations. Trump took it to a level that probably will never be reached again. They went in there and they just ripped the country apart. Right now as I speak, Trump is stealing money from you. All this stuff about his golf courses and that, he has the Secret Service, he has it, all these, a government officials coming to his golf courses on your dime. There's a difference between a president traveling, for example, but let's take Biden. Biden will travel. That money goes into the economy. It's your money. True. All presidents do it. However, Trump goes to his places and has all these people stay there at inflated prices. It's been verified. You can look on the computer. It's already, he's well over $3 million. Melania Trump did not want to go to the White House. Well, there was reasons for that. One, she's inferior. She's a stupid woman. I know they try to play her up, but she really does not have much of an education. The assets that she does have, I don't even want to talk about, so we'll leave that alone. But she didn't want to go there, so she stayed in Trump Tower. All right, fine, stay there, I don't, give, I don't care. But then the city of New York had to spend a lot of money to protect her. $120 million worth. Now think about that, $120 million to protect her because she was renegotiating 
her prenuptial agreement because she had him over a barrel. It came out today that there's a good chance they're getting divorced. So the reason I say it, this is your money. This is Trumpism. Trump will take other people's money. He'll take the country's money. Even that, that sham of a uh, 4th of July parade, that was $13 million, and people didn't go to it. He did that because he wanted to be like Putin, be like Kim Jong-un, be like President Xi, even be like the president of France. They do it out of patriotism. He did it out of his ego. Trumpism does not care about people. They care about money. They care about power. Republicans. The Republican Party is a respectable party. Disagreements? Sure, a lot of them. Good ideas? Sure, a lot of them. The problem is now, Trump has overtaken the Republican Party. True Republicans are going to have to step forward and separate yourself. Unfortunately, in which to do that, because you went in so deep, because Mitch McConnell, and well, first of all, let, let me put a side note on Mitch McConnell. Uh, Mitch McConnell did not like Trump, did not want Trump as president. We know that. One of the reasons that he kind of changed his mind was he knew, he thought he could manipulate him. So he could get what he want using Trump as a front man because Trump is nothing but a puppet, an idiot puppet at that. But he also did something else. Barack Obama had sent out a Russian oligarch for spying. Mitch McConnell brought him back removed the sanctions by himself, did not go through Congress, did not go through anyone. He somehow removed the sanctions and the guy built an aluminum plant in Kentucky. Now here's the problem with that. He got a kickback. You brought a spy back into the country. Yes, he brought jobs. He's not here because he wants it. He can make aluminum in, in Russia and sell it. He can make it in any other country. He did it because Mitch McConnell got a kickback. Two, Trump has, has that in his back pocket. That's why Mitch McConnell watches his mouth. The second thing is Trump played the con game. He made his wife Secretary of Transportation a position she really wasn't qualified for. I mean, she had some qualifications, but she wasn't. She, she fit it, and she filled a need. McConnell came on board. That was the need. But she did something. She relaxed the laws on shipping so that her father, who was in China, could come into our country with his goods and with his shipping. Yeah, quid pro quo. Yeah, Trump's good for that. But this is why Mitch McConnell keeps quiet. One day it'll come out. Another um, winner in that, well, there's a lot of them, but let's go down the list. This is a Republican disgrace. I don't give a damn if this guy's in the Republican Party, Democratic Party, Communist Party. He's a damn disgrace. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is allegedly a Yale and Harvard graduate. He worked for some of the judges. Apparently, he's a brilliant lawyer. Well, I've never seen him be a brilliant lawyer, but he is a horse's ass. He comes up with the damnedest things to be get uh, attention. And, you know, because you act like a horse's ass does not mean you're going to be a president. So let's cut him out on that. But he's got a little game. This is a Trumpism game. This is how Trumpism works. Not Republican, Trumpism. He's caught having discussions with one of the judges on the Supreme Court, Neil Gorsuch. Now, Ted Cruz has a little game he wants to play. When you run for office, as I said, you have to do a statement of organization. You fill that out, and then everything has to be recorded. Everything has to be on the up and up. There are in-kind and there are monetary uh, 
uh, donations. In kind would be they let you use their car or something. You have to report that. We do that so that we know that they're not on the take, or at least that's what we think. We know that's not true either. Another lie. But Ted Cruz came up with a new plan, and he is talking with the Supreme Court Justice to try to get it through. Now this is slick as hell, but this is the type of Trumpism that's out there. He came up with a plan that from here on in, instead of making a campaign contribution, you make a loan to the campaign. So let's say I'm running for office, and one of you, uh, you'd like to see a, a road fixed or, or a building done. So you contribute with a loan to my campaign. So now, let's say I win. Okay, what used to happen about 30 some years ago is after your campaign was over, whether you won or lost, you could take the money and put it in your pocket. The government came back and said, no, 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 no more of that, no more of that. This has to be on the up and up. You either turn it over to charity, you roll it over, or you give it back. Now, having run, that was one of the reasons why I collected no money, uh, but that's another story. We'll leave that alone for now. But what Cruz wants to do is you would loan him $100,000 for his campaign, which would wipe out the limit. Because it's a loan, it has to be paid back. It doesn't have to be recorded, because he's not loaning it to the campaign, he's loaning it to the person who's using it for the campaign. So let's say he gets in office. He does what the guy wants. So they come back and he says, you know something? Just forget that loan. Don't worry about it. Do with it whatever you want. So he shoves it in his damn pocket. I ain't that. I, I give him uh, Ted Cruz credit. That's slick. You don't know anything about people. You don't know anything about politics. You don't know anything about why you're in that office. But you sure as hell are slick. But that's all you are. Donald Trump, slick. Mitch McConnell, slick. Why does that matter? Because these people work for you. They're supposed to be working for your benefit. You can say what you want about the Democrats, and I know in this area they do, but if you look at what Joe Biden has done, in the less than two years, he has excelled, and these things affect your lives for the better. Let me give you another Trumpster thing. Were you aware that Trump made governors beg or did not help them because he didn't like them during the COVID outbreak. People died. Some of the tragic stories were people that had COVID went into the hospital and their families couldn't say goodbye to them. There was a nurse that had three patients and because of Trump's bullshit, they were short on ventilators. Why? Because Jared Kushner and Donald Trump sold medical equipment to China in 2019 and then had to turn around and buy it back. Also, they didn't take the damn thing seriously. Over a million people died, and I know I've heard this crap before. This is Trumpster talking, Trumpster maggot talking, that, oh, not that many people died. Well, yes, that many people did die. Let's stop the line. Let's look at what the hell is going on. Because if we don't, this country is going to go to hell. Everything that I came up with, everything that I learned about this country, that I believed in and still believe in. We are the greatest country in the world. We are the most in innovative. We have the smartest people. You can be what you want, but that's not happening now. We are slowly going down the tubes because we don't think. We see what's going on, and we laugh it off, or we start a fight with it. Whether it's Democrat or Republican doesn't mean a damn thing. This is your future. This is your country. 
I want my kids, and I was very lucky, my kids went to Lake Orion schools, my kids came out with a great education. But the education for kids now is going to be suspect. Why? Because politicians, Mark DeSantis being one of them, Wait, was it Mark DeSantis? Well, that asshole down in uh, Florida, Ron DeSantis, there you are. I was right about the asshole part. He thinks he's some little dictator. He's telling people, and uh, the same one in Texas, they're banning books. They're banning what can be taught. You know, if you teach your kids the difference between right and wrong, and you teach your kids how to think, and how to decipher what they're being told, you don't need to ban anything. They'll be able to figure it out for themselves. But we have people now who are saying what you can and cannot think, what books you can read, what areas you can go to, even telling businesses what they can and cannot do. You will not say gay. Well, guess what, everybody? There's gay people out there, and they're damn nice people. There are black people out there, and they're damn nice people. There's Hispanics out there, and they're damn nice people. This crap about uh, white supremacy and Christian nationalists is bullshit. We are human beings. We get along. We can go to the ballpark. We can go here. We can go there. We can exchange ideas. We can sit down and talk with one another. Our families can come together and we can come out better than where we were. Our kids can go to school and learn and come out better and project more for the future of our country. Look at how we've gone. For me, I graduated in 1975. The damn computers were up against the wall. Now, there you are. More than what I learned is in this little thing right here. Why? Because we were able to think. Every day we came up with new stuff, but now we have people who are controlling it. Why? Because they want control on you. That's Trumpism. That's fascism. Now there's a lot, a lot of fascism that components to it that you have to understand. So I'm, I'm just giving a, an opening to it. In more shows, we'll go through down the list. But you need to know, we, do, we are not a country of authoritarianism. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. Believe me, authoritarianism, authoritarianism you don't want. All those freedoms you think you had, no more. You will be told what you can do and what you can't do. Now, I'm going to tell you a couple other things. Oligarchies. The rich get richer. They keep their power by paying to the autocrat. All right, let's put some names to it. Trump. Trump wants to be an autocrat. Autocrat is a nice word for dictator. The oligarchs run the business world. They will pay to Trump. Trump has learned this from Putin. He's learned it from Hitler. He's learned it from Mussolini. His, his first wife said that he studied this. He couldn't study any other damn thing, but he did study this because that's his personality. That's what he wants to be. But there's something in there that you need to understand. An oligarch and an autocrat and the dictator. If you look back on them, they say don't bring up Hitler, don't bring up uh, Mussolini, don't bring up Stalin. Bullshit. You have to learn from the past or you may be condemned to repeat it. Mussolini did the same thing with the black shirts. They worked for him and him alone. The police were told, you don't interfere with my black shirts. Trump, or uh, uh, Hitler did the same thing with the brown shirts and the SS. He couldn't win legitimately, so he started bringing terror. We see that now. 
All these militias are out there. People being terrorized in their homes. People not, not wanting to even do the ballots or, or the, the precincts anymore because they're being terrorized. Did you know the two women in Georgia that their names were on a hit list by one of the Oath Keepers who had them set for, to be killed? This isn't funny. This is not a joke. I'm just touching the, the, the scratching the surface. Now, Republicans, save your party. Denounce Trump. Yes, you're going to lose some political power, but this is the price you're going to have to pay for what they did. McConnell, McCarthy, all those Republicans that have backed Trump, it's like I said, they talk behind his back, they hate his guts, they don't even want him around. But they need him because one, he holds, you, you, you would think that the money power, the financial power, would be why they want him. But it's also the militias. It's also the people that are his followers. I've met some of them, and I've been threatened by them. Is that the politics you want? Think about it. You see it all the time. You see people like Steve Bannon pushing for violence. You see Stephen Miller, who is psychotic. Stephen Miller should be locked up. You see what they do. And for those that are Trump maggots, they look at it and say, oh, Trump did it? It must be good. Hey, did you ever think that possibly, with all these, uh, uh, Trump being in and out of court, did you ever give any credence, and this is just for the maggots, because people that are sane would know this, did you ever consider that maybe this guy is a crook? Maybe he's evil? The things that he does, they went down to Mar-a-Lago because he had documents there. And he had the list. He had the list. He knew what they were coming for. They had given him the list and gave him a chance to give the stuff back. And he thought, oh, don't, don't listen to them. They're, don't leave me alone. They already got 15 boxes. How much of that stuff could have gone to Putin? Where our locations are for our, our, our uh, CIA, uh, where our missiles are, where our hotspots are. Trump would have given it to him in a minute. Did you ever think that maybe this guy is a criminal? He wants everyone else put in jail. His followers, lock her up, lock him up. Uh, how about this, Mike Pence, hang him. Hang Mike Pence. Is that what you want? And don't give me this crap that it didn't happen. You watch it. Wise up. Think on your own. I'm not, I'm nobody important. I'm a citizen like everybody else. I can see this. I'm not, I'm not uh, some scholar, but I can see bullshit. I'm asking you to see it. Take two steps back and look at what's going on objectively. Think it through. Listen to it. Is this what you really want? Just a, a, a word of caution, a word of fear. Let's say Trump were to become president again. The autocracy will start. He's already said so. He's going to clear out the government and put in total loyalists who will do only what he says. Good example. Trump wanted protesters shot. The military said, no, we can't do that. We, that's against the law. Well, at least shoot him in the legs. Really? The president wants that? The people on January... Well, let's see. When they in, had the protest, Trump had to go down to the bunker. 
He was crying. That has been verified. He was crying down there. He was scared. They said Melania held up better than he did, which doesn't surprise me. So in order to revive his manhood, he did that march to the church. Number one, the church didn't want him there. He just did it. It was, it was a photo shoot. He was going to show that God was on his side. Well, I don't know. God talked to me and wanted, asked me, you know, because you know, Trump talks to God, so, so do I. And we may talk to a different God. God asked me, doesn't he know which way to read the Bible? I said, what do you mean? He said, it's upside down. What a damn fool. But he had the protesters beaten up. He showed his manhood. That's an autocrat. If he gets in power again, you can be sure that there will be a crackdown. And he will elevate the executive position above the judicial and uh, um, legislative. He will be the law. And people who are with him can break the law and he'll pardon them. We've seen that. Not only have we seen it, he actually sold pardons. He cheated the system to make money. He put criminals back out on the street. Because the system works this way. If you want to pardon, you plead your case through a lawyer. He writes up the paperwork, it goes to the DOJ. The DOJ investigates and gives a recommendation to the Attorney General. The Attorney General investigates and then passes on to the President. Trump bypassed all of that. You get a lawyer, you pay him $2 million, which they did. They get their pardon and then down the road the money goes to Trump under the table. Is that what you want? Because that's what you got. But there's something else. A dictator and an autocrat. And with Trump, Trump says he wants to be, he wants to lead this country. But the majority of the country hates his guts. He has enemies. There's the enemies. Look at them all up there. And the Democrats are the enemies. The liberal media, I don't know what the liberal media is. Maybe it's the people that tell the truth. Well, the point is, you have so goddamn many enemies. Why would you want to lead the country if the majority of the people are your enemies? The 30% that follow you, and of that 30%, some of them are, are phony anyway. They're just doing it because they want something. But then there are some psychos in there too. They have to keep power. Hitler had his brown shirts and his SS. Mussolini had his black shirts. Trump has his militias. And they're out there. And they are mobilizing. And they pushed for guns. Now here's a question for all of you. I'm going to put it out for you to think about. Think about it. Don't do it, just think about it. The Supreme Court just passed a law saying that you can carry, open carry. Okay? And the NRA and the Republican Party want to protect your gun rights. And protecting gun rights is fine for people who are responsible. Okay? I'm just going to throw that little tidbit in there. But with all these people carrying guns, that would, in theory, in Theory, and I express theory. Everybody has one free kill. Why? And what is one free kill? Well, if I'm carrying a gun, and I carry it open, a gun has a, a, a specific purpose. Now, like the NRA says, that gun is neutral. It doesn't do anything. It's an inanimate object. I agree with that. I don't like it, but I agree with it. 
If that gun sits there, it's not going to do anything. True. Very true. But if I pick it up and I'm going down the street, somebody pisses me off. Maybe they cut in front of me on US 10. Hmm. So I get road rage. Or maybe they just make me mad. Or maybe maybe someone cussed out cussed me out. And I'm gonna get get even. Now I could fire off that gun, maybe kill somebody. In theory. At that point I could end up in jail for the rest of my life. But that means somebody would die. Now that theory doesn't mean that go out and get a gun. I'm saying, why do you need to carry a gun? Have we not learned how to get along? You would not want somebody who's a drunk driver or a reckless driver to be on the road when your kid is in driving your car. Then why would you want somebody who's reckless with a gun? Because other countries, they don't have guns. They get along just fine. We don't. And a lot of people have to die needlessly. A lot of, for a parent to lose a child, Uvalde, Paducah, uh, Connecticut, Florida, Texas. Man, for those who have never felt losing a child, you have no idea. You can watch it on TV. I used to do that. I used to, I'm going to tell you a sad story. When my son died, I used to watch Law and Order all the time. And you know, they go in there into the, um, examine the body and everything and, and the, the, I'm trying to think of the name, the, the person who does the autopsy. And I used to watch that and I didn't think too much of it. I just watch it and watch the rest of the show. I had to go identify my son's body. I can't watch that stuff anymore. When my son died, part of me died. For parents who have lost a child, and for someone to come up and say, I know how you, no you don't. You really do not. No child should have to die because somebody is reckless. Can you stop it 100%? No. Can you slow it down? Yes. Even gun owners, responsible gun owners now want stricter laws. It's not the Republican or the Trumpism way of they want to take away your guns. No, they want responsible people to have guns, just like they want responsible people to drive cars. They want responsible people to be in politics. Now, I say this because, this, again, this is just random thoughts, but for you, Take two steps back. Look at your life. Look at what's going on around you. What future do you want for your kids? These people that were going to uh, change the election. The election was fair and square. Even Trump collected thousands and thousands and maybe millions of dollars when he said Arizona's going to do another audit. Turned out that son of a bitch didn't pay for it. He had somebody else do it. He kept the money. Just like right now. He wants people to pay him because his he got raided. He got raided. Well, first of all, he didn't get raided. They went in there to get what belongs to the federal government and the people of the country. But he's turning in. Look what they're doing to me. Donald Trump. I'm so abused. It's all money and power. There's no way in hell they could collect all the guns. That's just horse shit. 
The only thing that collecting the guns would do would wipe out unemployment for years. And the reason it would wipe it out is there's no way in hell we would have enough people to collect all the guns that are out there. But your life, your kids' lives, you need to watch what's going on. You need to assess it. You need to sit down and talk about it. We've gotten to the point Democrats can't talk to Republicans. You've got to find out if somebody's uh, uh, what their persuasion is, political persuasion, to even see if you can break bread with them. People have lost friends. I have lost friends because of this. It's got to stop. I don't want my, the rest of my world to be like this. I don't want the world being like this for my kids. I don't want them to go through life with militias out there and with an idiot who just is more concerned about his power. And, and for those people that think that Trump and Trumpism is good, you're sadly mistaken. I'm asking people now to vote. Vote for what you want in the future. If you want Trumpism, go. For those who don't, Get your ass out and vote. Vote early and make sure that you tell your friends to vote. That is our way, our safe way, our sensible way, our civic way to make change. That's ours. In the next two elections, we may lose that because there's people plotting right now. Like the one judge said, Judge Ludig, Donald Trump is a menace to society. I say he's a social disease, especially with everything he touches. But these next two elections will determine where we're going to be in the future. And that's no joke. So as I said, this was kind of rambling. I wish Corey would have been here because it uh, would have kept me more on target. But I hope I said something to make you think. I hope you, just, just for a minute, I may be a horse's patoot, could be. My wife thinks so sometimes. But I hope I said something to strike a nerve. And that you'll take it and just think it through. One more thing before I go, I want to thank uh, my producer, Joe Johnson, with, uh, I mean, I'm nothing without him. And that uh, you all start watching different types of news. There are some apps that you can look at on your phone and just learn from everything. Take the time. Save the stories. Read them later. Makes great bathroom reading. But learn. And be wise. The future is in your hands. Right here when you're casting your ballot. Thank you very much. I hope... Uh, the show was <laughs> at least entertaining anyway. And uh, have a good night. We'll see you next time on Political News and Political Views. Thank you. Thank you.